and we want you to have faith in God.
This is my church. We stand as one. We march by faith, united by love. God, open my heart to receive the word. And let me apply that which I have.
songs where we had testimony service. And they would start off with songs like that before they gave you a testimony. Hallelujah. I heard my mother, I'm sorry, my sister, she had like a mother sometimes. Anyway, I heard my sister tell me that her pastor told her, you know, we ought to have some recent testimonies. Not, not what happened way back when, but what he did yesterday or what he did this morning. Don't sit down on God, y'all. We ought to have something we have to say about him more recent. Why? Because he's an on-time God. He's a God that hears. He's a God that sees. And my Bible tells me that he's Jehovah Jireh. That means he sees the need before the need even comes. <laughs> oh, come on, y'all. Woo! How many know you got the victory this morning? Yes, God. You got the victory. Yes. Hallelujah. Turn to your name and say, I have, I have the victory. I'm not preaching this morning. I'm just yeah. singing. Yeah. Just, just singing. Just singing, just singing. The, the, the scripture in 1 John, I believe, says yeah. that this is the victory yeah. that we have. Yeah. Even our faith. Hallelujah. It's your faith that causes you to have the victory. So we're going to sing just a little bit of that victory. And then I don't know if it's going to Bishop or to our speaker. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. Come on, say, uh, victory is mine. Victory is you know, mine. sometimes you have to tell yourself yes. that the victory is yours. Because sometimes it doesn't look like right. you're going to win. Yes. Oh, sometimes it don't look like, Bishop. Yeah. It's going to be okay. It don't feel good. Folks are talking. People are walking. Yeah. But you've got the victory. Yes. And sometimes you have to get up in the mirror in the morning and say, victory is mine. Yeah. I don't care what you say, devil. It's mine. Y'all gonna sing that with me this morning. I don't know what key I'm in, but you know me. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan. I told Satan. Yeah, be behind. Victory today is mine. Victory. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan. I told Satan. Yeah, be behind. Victory 
today, Father God. Glory, glory, glory. I thank God for our praise team. And I told them I had a song in my heart this morning. Can't sing, but I want to give glory and honor to my Father. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth his praises shall continually be in my mouth and i will bless the lord at all times his praises shall continually be in my mouth. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. In my mouth. In my mouth. His praises shall continually be in my mouth, in my mouth, in my mouth, his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise your holy name today, Father God. No matter what, Lord, your praises shall continually be in my mouth, Father. God, I will continually bless the Lord at all times, Father. God, we thank you, Lord, as we humble ourselves before you this morning, giving you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Hallelujah. This is the day that you have made, Father God. We're going to purpose in our hearts and our minds to be glad in it, Father God. Lord, we thank you for your presence already being in this place, Lord. We invite you in to move the way that you see forth to do so. We yield to the Holy Spirit this morning, Father God. Crucify this flesh, Father God. No Rashida, but you, Father God, as your people come to hear from 
from you, Father God. Lord, we thank you for the privilege and the honor to come gather together to seek you, to praise you, and to lift your holy name up, Lord. And we will be so mindful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, Lord. In Jesus' magnificent, holy, miraculous, mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Go ahead on and be seated at this time. I thank and praise God this morning for the privilege and the honor. Thank God for being the head of my life, this opportunity that's been presented. I thank and praise God for my bishop. I love you, Bishop Sorrell Gillespie, my first lady. I love you guys so much. Our mother, I thank and praise God for her. Hallelujah. I thank and praise God for all of our elders, our deacons, our ministers, everyone in respectful, rightful places. I thank God for you, our musicians. Hallelujah. Our cameramen and women back there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It takes a village. It takes all of us to make this work. I thank and praise God for our Facebook attendees, our listeners today. Hallelujah. We thank God for the technology that allows us to be connected and in tune. Hallelujah. If we can't get to the house of the Lord, but we thank God for everyone that's here today and excited for what God is getting ready to do. I could not go on without giving glory and honor to praise to God for my gift my husband, the Deacon Joe, hallelujah. I thank God for my gift. I have to remind myself that he is a gift. Jesus, he is a gift. Lord, I ask for that. That's my gift, Lord. So I thank God for my gift. My gift and I just celebrated six-year anniversary on yesterday. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank and praise God. It was six years on yesterday that Deacon Joe and I stood right here before Bishop and Mother, just the two of them. <laughs> Deacon Joe and I stood right here, right before Bishop, our senior Bishop, C.W. Gillespie and Mother Gillespie as our witness. Amen. Just the two of us, small, intimate. I'll never forget. Mother said, why y'all look so mean? Why y'all not smiling? <laughs> I said, Lord, we don't know what we getting into, Jesus. But we're going to be obedient, Lord, and we just going to trust you. We love each other, Lord, and we just going to trust you. And I thank God that we did it. I thank God that we did it. And I thank God for where he has brought us from and brought us to up to this point and period of time. So thank you, hubby, my gift. I thank and praise God for him. Amen. I'm not going to prolong us. I got an assignment this morning, and um, I have a promise that I made to my baby girl. She said, oh, man, Miss Love, you teaching today. We're going to be here all day. I said, what? Girl, when you get up there, we're going to be there all day. I said, you know what? No, we not. I promise you we not. <laughs> I guess I should have made a promise that I can't keep. But I'm going to try to hold to that promise. I'm going to let God have his way as we go forth into this message. So um, today's message title is, a season of barren, but God knows what I am birthing. I want you to touch your neighbor and say, a season of barren, but God knows what I am birthing. All right. So as Bishop came forth on fire last week, he said, it's Mother's Day, um, the month of May. We're going to be celebrating our women. Here we go. He was pumped up. Like, this spirit rubbed off. Like, yeah, you're right. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right, we in here. And Bishop began to say, we're going to bring this woman forth. We're going to bring that woman forth. And we got this woman coming forth. And I said, that's right. Let's look at all these gifts that we got in here. Look how we connected to the body of March of Faith International Ministries and near and far all these women that are great women of God that God uses mightily. I was so excited as he said that. And he was like, we're going to keep running. He said, Sister Rashida, you're going to be the first one up. I said, oh, okay. Your sister was tired. I've been on a trip to Memphis. I'm a school teacher. We've been to Memphis on a field trip. We had just did prom last week. And I was just like, Lord, I'm just going to get to the house today, Lord. 
If I could just get to the house of the Lord, I can get my strength. I can get what I need, my portion to get me through the week, my God. And little did I know when one assignment was over, the next assignment was right around the corner. So I thank and praise God for my bishop. And when he said it, I started saying, ooh, this women's month, Lord. So what mighty woman in the Bible do you want me to talk about, Jesus? I was like, okay, so we're talking about Mary. I said, well, you know what? Pastor Krim and Pastor um, Rick down there in Memphis, they came up here. She set it on fire when we honor mother, our mother here. I said, okay, she talked about Mary. I said, who you want me to talk about, Lord? We're going to talk about who? Bathsheba, Vesta. I said, some people that we don't even know that's in the Bible, Lord. How you want me to do this, right? So I just started throwing things out to the Lord. And I love my relationship with my Heavenly Father because he is so funny to me, like, merciful. But the way we operate is amazing to me. So the Lord said, you going to talk about Hannah. I said, oh, you got jokes. I said, so the woman that ain't never birthed a physical child, you going to have me talk about this woman, huh? You're trying to be funny, God, you know. And so <laughs> I thank God for that because he began to speak to me and minister to me at that place. Because when we always hear about Hannah in the Bible, we think about this is the woman that did not have children. And so God said to me as I laughed with him, and again, I can laugh with him and at him, not in a disrespectful way, because I know he has, I know the thoughts and plans that he has for me, never to harm me, never to hurt me. He's never going to use what I see as lack or even what people see as lack as a mark against me. He used what I view as a lack as a blessing. And he was saying like, uh-uh. So whatever he gives me something that doesn't fit in the life or fit in the vision that I think my life has, I know that he's birthing something. He's doing something in me and he's encouraging me. So he used the one thing that I have, well, many things, but the one thing that I have yet to do naturally, and he began to let me think. He said, okay, here you go. You're getting it twisted, Rashida. You looking at a natural birth that you've never had yet. How many people, how many seeds, how many daughters, how many people have I given you that have crossed your path that if it was not for you planting that seed, that seed being watered and fertilized, they would not know me. He began to show me my ministry in coaching when I coached at SIU on a women's basketball team and Erica and Courtney and Carleya and all them that came through here. I, he showed me the high school, the girls that I stood outside of my classroom because, you know, they say separation between God and church. Pray for me, y'all. Okay, so God got me in that building for a reason. I have an assignment, not just to teach those children family and consumer sciences, but the Lord got me on a mission and an assignment at that school. So I thought about the many young women who was crying out to me, and we just stepped outside of my classroom. I said, baby, are you saved? And they said, no, do you want to be saved? Do you know what it means to be saved? I done went through the sinner's prayer with students right outside my classroom, holding their hands, believing and trusting in God, and God brought that to my remembrance. <laughs> I said, okay, God, we get too caught up in stuff here. The many that you have birthed, Rashida, and I thank God for right now for our new little blessing in our house, Zakia, and how he's teaching us. Amen. Amen. So we have a little 15-year-old daughter in the house, and God knows the season and the time of your life to bring exactly what you need and as we thought we were a blessing to her, my God, has she turned our house upside down in a good way, in a good way. Lord, has she turned our house upside down. I can see my husband and I coming together even more. We're communicating better. We're praying together. We're trying to figure this thing out. We see her growing and maturing and changing thoughts and patterns. And I say, my God. Lord, you are just so awesome. I just, I'm thanking him for that today. I thank God for that today as we get forth to go, excuse me, to go forth into the message. So, <clears throat> again, it's a season of bearing. I'm going to stop right there. I have a quick slide that I'm going to show. I told you guys I'm a school teacher. I try to, Lord help me. <laughs> so, I use PowerPoint slides and I bring forth my lectures and stuff like that with my students. I got activities and everything for us today. So, we're going to let the Lord have his way. So, it says the a season... <laughs> Y'all going to get something up out of here today. What you thought? Faith without works is dead being alone, okay? You going to do some work today, all right? Because you going to get what God got for you to get. And I'm coming into agreement with you today. Uh-uh. We going to get these things, okay? We getting these things. 
Let's get it. So really quick, <clears throat> excuse me. The definition of a season. So I have a slide that shows us our four seasons that we have here in the United States, okay? It's four divisions consisting of usually three months, every three months of the year, summer, spring, winter, and fall, marked by a particular weather pattern or change. Y'all see it was raining this morning, stormy, and right now the sun is out, okay? That's what the spring usually does to us, okay? That, spring, that season of spring, okay? And it's usually consistent of the daylight hours getting shorter or longer, resulting from the earth's changing position with regard to the sun. The sun. The sun. All right, my sister got it. S-O-N. The sun. Our changing position to the sun, all right? Now, we talk about the star that's in the sky and the atmosphere and, you know, those particular things. But as I begin to study, the Lord said, yeah, the sun, Jesus, okay? And I said, well, you know what? He is the star of David. That's the star up in the sky. You know what I'm saying? So me and God just be kicking it. So I begin to listen to what he said, our change in our position to the sun. And as we go through each one of these seasons, we're going to see what typically takes place. And you can also see what season you may be in in life. Everybody's seasons is different. And how God deals with you in that particular season is how God deals with you. Everyone is different. I love the uniqueness of each and every one of us. And what works for one, God may not do that, okay, for the other because he knows what we need. So when we look at the winter, it's typically the coldest month. All right, we usually have snow, um, longer, longer nights, um, or shorter days, so less sunlight. Um, it is usually when the sun is the furthest from the earth. That's when our bears begin to go into hibernation, and they sleep for a long period of time. Think about your life <laughs> in the winter. We see that the birds begin to migrate to warmer climate. People begin to move out your life and, and those particular things when we're looking at the season of winter, all right? And winter, again, is the furthest season away from the sun. Now, you may be in the winter, even though it's in, in, the, in, in the States, it's spring, you may be in a winter season of your life, but that's okay. Because although you may be far from the sun, the sun is right there with you. You may be far away from the sun, but the sun is still right there with you. And he's taking you through, even in that cold hour, even in that distant space, he is still right there. And he's the one that's taking you through to get you to that next season of your life. So when we look at the next season, we go into the spring, okay? And spring is usually represented, okay, hold on, the winter is usually our time of December, January, and February, okay? Then we transition to the spring, and we hit the March, the April, and the May. Those three months. I love God with numbers three, the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son. I was like, God, you all up in this. Like, thank you, Father, for the little subliminal messages. Not that he don't have to make any, but you know what I'm saying, how he bring them forth. So when we look at the spring, this is when things begin to wake up, all right? The birds and the, the flowers, and we see the bears starting to come out, all these different animals start coming out. We begin to wake up. It's the season when our seeds, we start planting seeds, all right? We start getting busy in our gardens. Who got their garden ready? Anybody been out there? Go ahead, Sister Sam. Look at the elders right here, right? I don't do it, but I need somebody to teach me. I would love to do it, but so we see that takes place. It's a season where there's usually a lot of rain, and we usually signify rain as a, a bad time. It's pouring down. It's kind of difficult to go out and enjoy yourself, but we need that ground to be fertilized. We need that ground to be wet and moist so that those seeds that we are planting can actually take root down there. So the spring season is when we start to bloom and things start coming up. Um, storms take place in our life in the spring. We hear all about these tornadoes that's been taking place in different parts of the world and dust storms. Oh, my God, I think it was in Springfield on 55 or something like that. When the dust came in and the big car pile up, my goodness, it can come a time of life where we get a little confused. Like, what's really going on? But God is not the author of confusion. And again, he's in control. So then we're going to go to the next, who these hot months, my goodness. We're looking at this summer season, all right? And that summer season is usually marked by the June, July, and August. During that time, we are tip it's typically the hottest time of the year. The earth is closest to the sun, long days and short nights. 
that's when you're protecting that crop that you have out there. Okay, you are tending to, you're being attentive, you're watching those things that you have already planted to make sure if it gets too hot, sometimes it burns and it scorches, okay? So you still have to continue to water, you still have responsibility, and sometimes when we look at it with God, that hot part, whoo, that hot time, whoo, that's when our making is taking place. That's when he's burning those things up out of us, burning those things up off of us, all right? So then when we come into the fall season, it's harvest time. All right, we look at the fall, it's harvest time. We're reaping the seeds that we have sown. We see the leaves begin to fall, the, the, the leaves begin to change because now the things that we have sown is now it's time for us to reap and receive them. So I want you to look at it's a season. That means it's a time span. That's it. It's not a lifetime. It's a time span that you're going to be dealing with what you're dealing with, good, bad, or indifferent. Things may be good in your life. They may be working for you. But God said in this next season, you don't need it. In the next season, it's going to hold you back from what I'm doing. It's not bad. It's not a sin. It's actually good. But for you in this season, I need that pruned up off of you. I need that stripped up off of you for you to go and do what I called you to do in the next season. So a season of barren. All right. So now we're going to go look at the word barren here. And we're going to pull up on the slide this dry, whew, desolated place of life, okay? Ah, God, when we get to them dry, desolated places in life. So when we look at the word barren, it's an area or areas, it could be multiple areas, okay, where growth is sparse or stunted. That means nothing's taking place or it's very little, too small, okay? Stunted means it's been stopped, it's been halted. It's usually an area of unfertility, unreproductive, and it could be dry. A place of emptiness, feeling abandoned and all alone, deserted. It could produce fruit, but it is inferior. It is below quality. It is not to the standard of what God has for us. And so when we look at that barren stage and part of our life, it's okay because it is for our making, all right? So don't get discouraged in the season of barren. When you look at the season of barren, say, Lord, what is it that we need to do? Lord, what am I not doing? Lord, how can I correct this? Lord, thank you for bringing that to my attention and show me how to pray for a season that I will be producing, a season where I can bring an offering that is satisfying to you, Father God. I can give you the best that you deserve, Father God. So a season of barren, but God knows what I am birthing, okay? So here we go. <clears throat> we're going into the book of Hannah, okay? So I do got some word for you. Let's go ahead on the first Samuel. We're going to go into first Samuel chapter one. First Samuel chapter one. Our first verse that we're going to go into, I want to talk a little bit about Hannah because this was very significant for me as I began to come forth with the word of God. I said, wow, God, Hannah. Hannah and Anna, very similar names in the book <clears throat> of the Bible. And they had two totally different purposes, but they are connected. So when you look at Anna, Anna was a woman who stayed in the church and prayed for the people, and that was her life dedicated to the church, to the actual building, to the actual building up of the church, all right? When we go into Hannah, we know Hannah was the one who was barren. She did not birth a child until she had went before the Lord. For many years, she had this prayer, and she had some ad adversities that she had to go through in the process to get to what she had been praying for. So when I begin to look at the name Hannah, Hannah, which means grace. Mm. Grace is signified by the number five. We are in the fifth month. I said, oh, Lord, that's why you let us get married in the fifth month. You knew me and my husband going to need some grace, Lord. We're going to need a lot of grace, Jesus. I said, oh, look at you, Lord. So Hannah means grace. The number five, which is the fifth month that we are in, also stands for grace. Grace means God's unmerited, undeserved favor. Favor is God's approval. My God, here we go, Lord. Uh, and I said, Lord, you just so awesome. We look at the number five, how God has graced us in this month. This is our season, y'all. This is our season right now that God has graced us and favored us. So whatever you are asking, whatever you are in need of, Elder Delisha was all in my message. It is faith 
that is going to move God. It is faith that's required for us to get to that place that we need to get in the Lord, okay? I am not going to go through all those scriptures, but if you want to take a picture of them and write them down, we're going to be talking through many of those scriptures here today as we go forth and talk about Hannah and her situation. So Hannah, again, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, she was a woman who was married to a husband that had another wife. So at that time, that was okay for them to do, all right? So she had a husband, and it was two wives, so sister wives. They got some crazy shows. I mean, say crazy. They got some shows on TV that's very similar to this called sister wives, okay? We both going to have him, so we just going to make it happen, okay? So it, it ain't nothing new under the sun. Now, y'all see, ain't nothing new under the sun. What we see and happen today has happened, all right? So we see Hannah and Paniah. Hope I said it right. Paniah, yeah. They are the two wives, okay? Elkan is the husband, and he loved Hannah more than his other wife, okay? But his other wife was producing children for him. Every time they were intimate or they became to know each other, she ended up pregnant. But that was the opposite thing for Hannah, okay? And he loved her so much that he would give her like double, triple portions, and he would give her the most of any and everything. But that still did not satisfy Hannah's desire. There is a desire that God has placed in you today. It is something that just burns in the inside of you that you sometimes look at and get frustrated and get difficult and say, why has it not happened yet? That's not your doing. That's something that God has given you. And God tells us in his word, he's going to give us the desires of our heart. But he tells us first that we got to seek him. Go to the kingdom. Go to God. And he will give you that desire. He will fulfill what he has said. He's going to fulfill the purpose that he has in your life. So Hannah has this desire. My husband is spoiling me rotten. My husband is giving me all that I could ever ask for, but I still want a son, okay? And I looked here when we go into chapter 1, verse um, 6 and 7. I'm going to read a couple things here. It says, And her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so every year by year, he, she, once I, when she went into the house of the Lord, so she provoked her there, for she wept and did not eat. God, so what happened here is the one that's producing babies is coming to tease you because you're not, okay? That didn't catch God by surprise. You got people on your job. You got people in your family, you got people on your block that is judging you, saying stuff to you, teasing you because of your area that you feel like is an area of lack. It's provoking you, but God know what it's going to take to get you moving, right? God used Paniah to get Hannah to moving, okay? So that thing that's in your life is getting you to move. It's getting you to see God. It's getting you to have faith in God, to pursue after God. And you know what happened? Hannah went to the church every time they went to give offering, and it provoked her, and she went and she cried. And then what did she do? She fasted. You see, she, she said it was provoked her so much she ain't eat. Sometimes we face some things in life right now that we can't even eat. We can't even drink. We say, oh, my God, Lord. And we don't know it's a fast because it's like, Lord, why come I can't eat? Why come I can't drink? Because God is getting you to a place that you're coming to him. You see what she did? I went to the church when I couldn't eat. I went to the church when I couldn't drink. And what did I do? I gave it to the Lord. I came to him in prayer as I was provoked. That thing that's on your side, that thorn. That thing that's right in your face. You be saying, for real, you that bold? You gonna come right in my face and do this? You gonna disrespect me in my face? You gonna judge me right in my face? You gonna talk bad about me right in my face? My God, how bold are you? But sometimes God gotta give you a face visit. God gotta come put it right there plain and simple for you. God gotta say, here it is. Now what you going to do? Here it is. Now what are you going to do? I'm trying to move you to the place where I have promised you. But you didn't got discouraged. You didn't got all beat up and beat down. You didn't lost your faith. 
You didn't lost your hope. You didn't got worry and waiting on me. So God said, I'm going to bring this to your face because I need you to move to where I need you to get to so that you can get that measure that I've already given you so it can come to pass there. So we look at Hannah here. Hannah all discouraged. She go into the church. She praying before the Lord and she crying because her little mistress, her little homegirl, nan, nan, a boo, boo. I got another baby, nan, nan, a boo, boo. I got another promotion, nan, nan, a boo, boo. You've been here for 20 years, I only been here for five years, and I got a better score than what you got, nan, nan, a boo, boo. Okay, right, it get to you, right? So when we look at these particular things here, Hannah shows us what we should do and how we should go about it. Hannah went before the Lord in a prayer. And I'm going to look at it real here, Samuel chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. It says, so Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drank. Now Eli the priest sat upon the seat by a post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul. Sometimes our soul is so rough, and we're so disappointed, and we just so hurt. We don't even know what to do. And it says here, and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. Hannah made a vow to the Lord. And I laughed sometimes when pastor come forth, because I was that girl. Sometimes, well, you, you know, when I was a young girl, Lord, if you bring them back, I promise you I'll go to church. I'll make them go to church with me, Lord. Lord, if you please just do this one thing for me, Lord, I promise you I won't do it again, Jesus. Lord, if you just do this one time. And I look back on how, fa how faithful he is. My God. He knew I was going to mess up. He knew I was going to go back to doing the same thing. He just brought me up out of that I made a vow and a promise. Tell him I wasn't going to do again. But God was still faithful. And he allowed it to come to pass. He allowed that relationship to get back together. He allowed whatever I was crying out for to be mended or come back. He said, okay, well, you said if I did this that you was going to do something. Never honored my vow. Never honored my vow. Got what I wanted, and what did I do? Turn my back and kept on going. Ouch. How many of us get what we've been praying for God, and we forget to give it back to him? We forget to make a sacrifice of thanks unto him. We forget the prayer that we prayed to get us what we wanted. But now that we got it, we'll need you no more, Lord. We don't need you no more. You answered what I had asked for, but I forgot what I said I was going to do for you. But we see here Hannah made a vow, and we know that Hannah kept her vow unto the Lord. She said, if you give me a son, a man's son, I will give him back to you all the days of his life. He will be in the temple with Eli until you come get him. She said, I'll never put a razor to his head. And when we know about that, the Nazarene um, culture, where they come from, Jesus of Nazarene, okay? We know that she was coming from that seed. And we know that in that time, they couldn't touch anything. They couldn't drink the wine, didn't cut their hair. She made a vow. And the Lord is saying, where's your vow today? Are you going to keep your vow to me? Because I'm faithful and just. I'm going to do what I said I was going to do for you. And even what you come and ask me for, I'm going to do it. But are you going to keep your vow to me? I'm looking for people who are going to make a commitment, who's going to vow to me, a promise, a dedication, your life to me. So it says here, Hannah made that vow. She kept that vow. And Samuel went into the house with Eli all the time, okay? My last scripture that I'm going to talk about here with Hannah is I loved here in verse 18. Ha, huh, she says, so hold on, let me go back a little bit. <laughs> so I love Hannah's persistence unto the Lord. She came into the house of the Lord. She was crying, praying, couldn't hear anything. How many of us have been in prayer and nothing coming out? 
None coming out. You can't hear nothing audibly. But the Lord hear our heart. He know our hearts cry. She come into the house of the Lord and she's crying. Nothing's coming out, just the tears. And even the priest, bless his heart, the priest said, girl, you drunk. What you doing down here, girl? Would you please stop with this drunkenness and going about your way? But Hannah was desperate, y'all. She said, hold on, Eli, hold on, prophet, hold on, priest. I'm not drunk. I'm sore. I'm hurt. I need something from the Lord. Ah, Jesus. And what happened? She began to change and move the priest in the church. He began to hear her cry. And he said, oh, my God, this woman is in need. Oh, my God, she's trusting you, Lord. Oh, my God, you hear her cry, Lord. He said, you know what? I got to come and touch an agreement with you, sister. Because I got to come and touch an agreement with you, sister. Because what you are crying out before the Lord... I need him to do that for you because you are desperate and you are sincere on what you are giving to the Lord. He told her, go on and get up, girl. It, it's going to be well. It's going to be well, girl. I'm trusting that the Lord going to do. I'm coming to agree with you that what you are praying for, it shall come to pass. And it says here in that verse 18, Hannah got up. I love that. And Hannah got up. <laughs> and Hannah got up. And Hannah got up. Hannah got up. Put your name there, Rashida got up. I got up. I got up. I got up. You can't stay there. You got to get up. You got to move. You got to move. And it says right here in that verse 18, it says, and she said, let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. Her name, let me find grace, your unfair, your unmerited love. Let me find your grace in your sight. So the woman, the woman went her way, and she ate, and her countenance was no more sad. Look at that. She broke that fast. <laughs> she broke that fast. But you see the sacrifice that she had to make, that fast that she went before the Lord, and she didn't care. This, this goes to our young people in the house today. When the ministers call y'all forth, and we come up here, and I'm not judging, so don't think I'm judging. It's a word of encouragement for you. Everyone in here has a need. Everyone in here, from our head bishop, the man that the Lord has placed over us, bishop has a need, and we should be praying that that need be met. That's our job, to be praying for our pastor, our bishop, and covering him. But bishop, is, he's not exempt. Bishop has a need. Everyone in here has a need. So when we call you forth to come up here, we just ask that y'all close your eyes. Because you know what? Sometimes we get nervous and we get scared. And we allow people, people, people to discourage us. We allow people, people to blind us from seeing God and getting what God wants us to receive. And I say our youth, but it's some of us older seasoned ones as well, okay? So I want y'all to know that when God has something for you, it's a way that we come to him to receive it. Come to him in faith believing. Find somebody to come into agreement with you. And when you know it is done, you walk away and go enjoy your life. But don't you let no one blind you. Don't let no one stop you from what God is trying to do in your life. That's a sacrifice that you're making. You see what she said? Priest, uh-uh, I'm not drunk. I need this from the Lord. As a matter of fact, I need you to come in agreement with me. We need to, we're too, we're going to touch. God going to do this for me. She wasn't concerned even with the person of authority, the person of the religious part over her about her situation. So I'm encouraging you today that when you have a need and you coming before the Lord, you come up here and you believe by faith. If we come to the seat to get you, you believe by faith. It's not by coincidence. God got something in store for you, and God is moving in your life for you to receive it. So I thank and praise God for that. You have the rest of the scriptures up there to go through. I got five minutes to finish up here as we go forth. I'm going to close out today because I love Hannah's faith. We know that when she left, broke that fast, she and her husband knew each other, okay? So you see, she wasn't intimate with her husband while she was dedicating herself to the Lord. She was not intimate with her husband when she was dedicating herself to the Lord. She put everything and everyone aside. 
And you see what her husband said, a man of God that honored her sacrifice. She said, I'm not bringing, well, that's later on. She said, I'm not bringing my child to the temple until I wean him. Okay, he said, do as you know. Do, do what's good, honey. And when, you, when it's time for you to do what God told you to do, you do what God told you to do. Okay? It takes a man, it takes a God, spirit-led man to be able to do that. Okay? Again, he obeyed because he knew the responsibility that God had given her. And she said here, honey, I'm not being intimate with you. I need something from the Lord. Sometimes we got to shut everything down. Shut the house down. Shut it. Turn that TV off. You better go on downstairs, get up out of my face right now. I need something. As a matter of fact, go get your Bible and come up here with me at this table. Get the kids. Everybody come on up here. Everybody going on the fast. What you thought? We need something from the Lord because when I get blessed, you get blessed. When I receive from the Lord, you receive from the Lord. The word of God said that he blesses me to be a blessing. So when I receive the blessing, you get the blessing as well. So you know what? We all going to sacrifice something up in this house. Give God 15 minutes. I don't care if that's all you can give God at that time. Give him 15 minutes. Give him two hours not on that cell phone. Give him two hours of not drinking or the water or, or the food or something like that. You can do it. God will sustain you to be able to do that. So God is challenging us today. Come on, my people. I got great things in store for you. Come on, my people, I'm stirring you. Where is my vow? Where is your faith? You lost it, but that's all right. I'm coming to encourage you today that you got what you need because, again, you may just be in a season of barren. It may be dry. It may be desolate. But I know what I'm birthing in you, says the Lord. I know what it's going to take for it to come up out of you, and I demand that it does come up out of you in the name of Jesus. Here we go. I'm going to close out. I'm going to show this quick picture for you. Um, I'm, on, I'm on Facebook. Yes, I am. <laughs> and this was an inspirational quote that really just moved my spirit and my heart because I had to understand this here. And it says, an elephant and a dog became pregnant at the same time. You got to watch who you're comparing yourself with. Okay? You got to watch. First of all, God tells us not to covet. He told us back in Exodus, don't be coveting. Don't be wanting what somebody else got. Don't be desiring somebody else's gift. Don't be desiring somebody else's ministry. Don't desire nobody else's husband or wife or their job or their career. That's a smack in God's face. You telling God that what he gave you is not enough. You telling God that what he blessed you with, he messed up. You gave somebody else more than you gave me. What? Did you really just tell God that? That's a smack in God's face. So you telling God that he don't know the plans? You telling him he don't know the best that he has in store for you? Who are you? Were you there when I created everything? Were you there when I spoke it into existence? Were you there when I moved the mountains? Were you there? I don't think you were. So how you gonna tell me, yo God, that chose you that I made a mistake? How dare you? So again, he says, don't be covenant. Don't be wanting what nobody else got. I know what I got for you. I know what I got for you. It's for good and not of evil. It's to bring you to an ex bring you. That means you got to go through something. I'm bringing you to an expecting end. I know the end that I have for you. So you got to go through the process. So quit comparing and quit looking around what somebody else got. Oh, God, I've been here this long. Oh, sister and brother so-and-so. Jesus, they just came to the church. Lord, they just came on the job. Lord, look what they mama and daddy did for them, but mine didn't do for me. God knew who was going to be your parents. It wasn't by coincidence that your mama and daddy got together and here you come. No, God, don't. Don't do that to him. Don't do that to our father. So an elephant and a dog became pregnant at the same time. Three months down the line, the dog gave birth to six puppies. Six months later, the dog was pregnant again. And nine months on, it gave birth to another dozen puppies. The Pat Bright mother, that's too many anyway, Jesus. I see you fertile and you birthed. That ain't the desire that I have, Lord. Jesus. So it says here, the pattern continued. So the dog kept getting pregnant and kept giving birth. On the 18th month, that's a whole year and a half, 18th month, a whole year and a half, the dog approached the elephant questioning, 
are you sure that you are pregnant? You got to be careful. You got to be careful to protect yourself, protect your ministry, protect your house, protect you, your peace, peace, protect your joy. People don't know what you birthed, but God know what you birthed. God know how long it's going to take for you to birth what he put inside of you. Don't let the naysayers come to you. You sure? You sure God said that to you? You, mm, girl, uh, girl, look, she, I know, girl. You know, God, we in the church gossiping. Yes, the church gossiping. Girl, you can keep up. I, I, I don't know, girl, but that's for you to figure out. Girl, okay. Jeez, okay. Be careful. And for those that put their mouth on people, be careful. We don't know what God is doing in them. Heck, we don't even know what God's doing in us some of the time. We're, Worry about ourselves, stay in our lane. Lord, what you doing in me? Lord, what you moving in me? So we see here the dog come and question the elephant. You sure you pregnant? We became pregnant on the same day. <laughs> here we go, compare. Girl, we came into the ministry at the same time. Girl, we came into this job at the same time. Girl, we came into this school at the same time. Right, okay, we, didn't, we didn't came this in the same time. We did this at the same time. Your time ain't my time. My time ain't your time, and our time is not God's time. He says right here, I have given birth three times to a dozen puppies, and they are now grown to become big dogs. <laughs> they grown. They big dogs. I done let my kids go. They grown. You still ain't even birthed nothing yet. Come on now. It says here, yet you are still pregnant. You still caring. I didn't release the mind gone, but you still caring. Thank you, Jesus. But it says here, what's going on? The elephant replied, hallelujah. The saints of God replied, there is something I want you to understand. Know the word of God. Get it inside of you. That when the enemy comes to attack you, you got the word to come against that. Don't let discouragement set in your heart. Don't let weariness set in your heart. Don't let that frustrating frustration put you down. Don't let what somebody else speaking take root in your life. Again, know that word. So this is what the elephant, the elephant knew its purpose. It knew its birthing process. The elephant said here, there is something I want you to understand. What I am carrying is not a puppy, but it's an elephant. All right, what I'm carrying ain't what you carry. The weight of what I'm carrying is not the weight of what you carry. All right, understand, you carrying puppies. I got a whole elephant up inside of me, okay? <laughs> All right. I got a whole elephant up inside of me. So what it took for you is probably going to take more for me. It says right here, what I carry is not a puppy but an elephant. I only give birth to one in two years. It takes at least two years for me to get this one out. My God, it takes two years for me to get this one out. It says here, when my baby hits the ground, listen to this. When my birth, when my baby, when my promise hits the ground, the earth fills it. When I walk in this church, when I walk in that boardroom, when I walk in that bank, they feel it when we walk up in there. We shape stuff when we walk up in there. You don't know the weight that we carry. It says the earth feels it. It says when my baby crossed the road, what happened? Human beings stop and watch in admiration. What we carry, it draws attention. People got to stop and look and see, whoa, what is that? Arr, put them brakes on. Wait a minute. You see that? Oh, my God. Come on, y'all. It says right here, they watch and see in admiration what we carry. It draws attention. So what I'm carrying is mighty and great, the word of God. Don't lose faith. When you see others receive answers to their prayers, don't lose faith, my brothers and sisters. Don't be envious to what other people's testimonies might be. And if you haven't received your blessing, don't be in spare. Hold on. Say to yourself, my time is coming. And when it hits the surface of this earth, people shall yield. People shall stop. And people shall admire what we birthed. Say to your neighbor, a season of bearing. But God knows 
what I'm birthing. Amen. Give glory and honor to God at this time. Amen. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, Lord. As I get ready to have Bishop come up and receive our offering, there is a song that I want to play here. I told y'all when we come to church, we got homework to do. I'm a school teacher, okay? A school teacher still got homework. When we end a lesson at school, we give our students an exit slip. Before you leave up out this classroom, you're going to tell me something that you got, okay? So as I begin to study, I told you the teacher in me just came out. The Lord said, I need my people to go to Habakkuk 2 and 23. Our visions has been cloudy. We've lost sight of the vision. Everybody else and everything else that's going on in life, you forgot the desire that God placed in you. But the Lord says, today, I want you to write that vision today. Today, I need you to write it down. I need you to write it down upon the tablets that when you see it, and I think Elder Delisha said, you got to look in the mirror. You got to look in the mirror and see that. And speak to yourself sometimes. Speak over yourself. Encourage yourself. Let that vision come back. So what Elder Sherry was doing, Elder Sherry, there you go, Minister Elder Sherry. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Elder Sherry, as you were coming into the church, she gave you a, a note card and she gave you an ink pen. And as this song comes forth, I want you to listen to the words. But I also want you to write that vision that God had given you many years ago. It may have been yesterday. Some of us, it may have been 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Don't write your name on it. God knows your name. And God knows your heart. He knows the desire he placed in you. But I want to be like Eli. Not that I'm calling myself no prophet or no priest. No priest. I want to come into agreement with you today on whatever that desire that you're trusting God for. I want to connect with you on that. So as the music come forth, as you write that vision, I'm going to pull one of these baskets, and I want you to come by and drop that desire, drop that vision in that basket. I'm Hello, going to family. My hands with some oil. We would like to thank you for your continued charitable support. If you would like to sow into the March of Faith Community Church, please note the following ways to give. One, mail contributions to P.O. Box 999, Carbondale, Illinois, 62903. Two, cash app to Midwest SG. Three, Venmo to Midwest SG. Thank you again, and may God bless you. Bishop Sorrell, hoping that our services on today blessed you. And we'd like to remind you to have faith in God.